I want to start, if I can, let me just get that there. I want to start with this woman, of course, Wallace Simpson. Now, Wallace Simpson is, again, one of these people who, because of um, various myths and rumors about her, is associated with Shanghai. She wasn't in Shanghai for very long. She didn't do a great deal in Shanghai. And of course, when the abdication came along, the desire to trash her completely, to, to destroy her character, this, of course, you know, I mean, I'm sure around the world you're seeing this, but if you're sitting like I am at the moment in England, the notion of an American divorcee being a bit of a problem for the British press is a very, very current one. Um, we are, um, this is Wallace, of course, in the days when she was Wallace Spencer on her first marriage to an American uh, US Navy uh, officer, called Wynn Spencer. Now, why is she interesting? Well, she's interesting to me for a number of reasons in, as I say, that she is associated with Shanghai a lot. And I still hear people, I won't mention names, but I've seen presentations in the last year or so with people talking about Shanghai, saying Wallace Simpson came to Shanghai, she was photographed naked by Sir Victor Sassoon and blah, blah, blah. Complete nonsense. During the time that Wallace Simpson was in Shanghai, Victor Sassoon was in Bombay. The two never met. Well, they did meet, but not until much, much later. And she was the Duchess of Windsor by that point. Um, so here she is. Her husband is posted to Hong Kong. He's posted to Hong Kong and their marriage is falling apart in America. But she decides that perhaps his posting to Hong Kong with the U.S. Navy could be a start to re restart the marriage. They go to Hong Kong. They go to Repulse Bay. They do seem to successfully restart the marriage. However, he soon lapses back into his old ways, which were drinking and becoming a violent drunk and taking his violence out on her. Um, eventually, it got too much for her. He got drunk one too many times. He knocked her about one too many times and she left. She went to Shanghai from Hong Kong because she thought due to the existence of the American court in Shanghai, she could get a quickie divorce um, from Wynne Spencer. And that turned out not to be true. So she stayed for a few weeks. She went to the races. She did a few other things. But then she swiftly, for various reasons, moved on to Peking. And when she got to Peking, she checked into the Grand Hotel uh, de Peking, which is now the Nuo Hotel, the, the oldest part of, um, of the Beijing Fandian. And it's a fantastic hotel because at that time, 1924, just before Christmas in 1924, it was probably the best hotel in Asia. Uh, Sassoon hadn't built the cafe yet on the uh, Bund. Um, uh, Kadori's hadn't built the peninsula in Hong Kong yet. The only rival to the Grand Hotel to Peking was uh, Raffles in Singapore. So um, she checks in there and she goes straight up onto the roof, something you can't do now. And this is the opening chapter of the book, because in so many memories uh, of um, Peking at that time, the foreigners that arrived, who tended to be often quite wealthy, would stay at the Grand Hotel de Peking and go straight to the roof where there were regular tea dances, orchestras played, and most importantly, at night, you could see all the stars in the sky, I mean, many, many more stars than you would see now due to white light pollution. Um, and you could see across the city, particularly towards the Forbidden City, which fascinated so many people. And of course, around you, as you saw from that aerial shot before, teeming hutongs. Wallace stayed for a while and then soon went to stay with a friend in a, in a hutong, Shijia hutong. If you've been to um, uh, the Beijing Hutong Museum in Beijing, obviously, um, you, you've been on the hutong that she lived in. It was one of the most expensive hutongs uh, for foreigners to live in and wealthy Chinese, very connected government Chinese lived on that hutong. And she stayed there for nearly six months. It was by far the longest part of her China stay until the summer of 1925 when um, she left and went back to um, America, met a man called Simpson, and then of course went to England, met a man called Windsor, and then of course he became king. He decided to marry her, she abdicated, you know that story. Anyway, um, <clears throat> the point about it is, is that it's in Peking where this Navy wife from Baltimore decides to associate with all of these different people. And she learns how to make a living buying and selling jade. The Peking Hotel was very useful to her when people were on their round the world cruises. And as you know, I mean, Shanghai got so many visitors, Einstein, Chaplin and so on, because of the cruise ships. Um, they would call it Tianjin. From Tianjin, they would get the train through to um, Beijing and they would then, if they were wealthy enough, come to uh, the Grand Hotel to Peking, where there would be 
Mr. Uh, Vetch's bookshop where there would be Helen Burton's The Camel's Bell Curio Shop, where uh, Edgar Snow's wife Helen worked for a while, uh, where they could get uh, Western food and so on, and then see the city for a few days. And those people were known as Malalos by the Chinese. Uh, and they came in and they were um, uh, sold all sorts of things. And she did very well making a living um, selling them bits of jade that she bought, as well as playing bridge and mixing with various embassy officials, various foreigners of, of different countries, often very sophisticated people. And in a sense, it turned her, I think, into the person that became the woman that could that could be the Duchess of Windsor. And I think it also gave her a lifelong aesthetic that she stuck with all her life. You can see there the chignon haircut, the knot work she always wore on dresses and so on. You can see many, many pictures. And if you look at some of the things she took from China, jade, uh, ivory carvings, screen, silk screens, and various other things, we see them following her through her life. You can see pictures of them in her apartment with uh, uh, Simpson at Bryanston Square in London. You can see them um, when she uh, goes to the south of France with the Duke of, uh, with, the, with the King, and you can see them there eventually at their home in Paris. They travelled with her all through her life. So Peking was really the making of Wallace Simpson. And she lived in a hutong, and she was an aesthete. 